trying to do one more thing. Uh, skeletal remain. Skeletal prison. Skeletal prison, they're good too. They're, they're newer. Where the hell's that come from? Uh -huh. Came with the regular uh, Death Wish coffee, and then it came with that one. And I'm like, all right, god damn it. <laughs> even, <laughs> even in the coffee world, I can't escape from Zach Wilde. I keep talking, just say gibberish if you uh, need to. And gibberish if you need to. I right, am yeah. currently talking right now. Alright. This is my voice. Alright everybody, episode 5, coffee time. Today, I have, from Air Raid, Paul Wagner. What's going on? It's been a while. It's been about, to my count, about a month now. You know, I've, I've been having a bunch of different projects happening, so I've just been spreading myself real thin, but here we are, episode five. Today, let's just do this right off the bat so I don't forget. Today we have Papa Nicholas coffee, and that comes from Batavia, Illinois. And their slogan is, from the earth to the cup, give the world Great coffee at a great value. Now that's wholesome. Uh, they've been here for about 100 years, so I was in the aisle and I've never heard of this brand, and it's actually pretty good, you know? So I figured 100 years, they kind of got their shit together. And we're both now sponsored by Papa Nicholas too, yes. so we're gonna have Papa Nicholas guitars and exactly. cabinets, and it's pretty fucking rad. It's pretty awesome. Papa Nicholas, the original Papa Nicholas, is actually a huge priest fan. Yeah, know, so. he wrote it for them, I think. Exactly. So now that's what's happening now. But no, seriously, it's actually pretty good. It's a medium roast, and it's just dubbed Viking Blend. So you can imagine, I saw this, and I'm like, oh, we have beards. We're kind of like Vikings a little, if you, you know, I don't know, if you take out the murdering and rape and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right. So, Papa Nicholas, what's going on, dude? Nothing, man. Just hanging out, drinking some coffee. You yeah. know, how the hell have you been? I feel like I haven't seen you in a billion years. It's been a while. We were just trying to figure out how long it's been. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't remember the last show that Vicious Attack and Air Raid played. It might have been at, like, End Zone in Aurora, like, three, four years ago. In some really? random winter show. Oh, God. No, you might be totally right. God, the end zone isn't even around anymore, right? Or is it something else now? You know what? I was recently out in Aurora, and end zone is still there. I haven't heard about anyone gigging there or playing shows, but it is it is still a building. I remember one of the promoters that used to, like, was based out of there was Dave. I uh, forgot what his last name was. But he, uh, he was doing a bunch of shows, and then he disappeared, I think, when the management changed or took over or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess they still kept their name, so... I, I don't know if that's good, because the venue always smelled like a toilet, like yeah. the whole venue. It's part of the ambiance, though. Yeah. It's a shithole. It's and it was, fun to play. Yeah. But yeah, so that's probably was. I, I think I remember that bill, too. It was... Uh, it was Dark Entropy, Air Raid, uh, Vicious Attack. There was one other band that I think dropped off like the day of due to yeah. like inclement weather because it was snowing like a motherfucker. Yeah. And there was another round of snow scheduled for later that night. That's right. It was snowing. Yeah. I remember I was afraid to go home. I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ, you know. There was a lot of snow on the ground even for uh, like a Chicagoan, you know. Yeah. I was like, oh, Jesus. But yeah, otherwise, I don't think Carol was there, right? Am, am I? That was, it was a pretty quiet night. Yeah. <laughs> A pretty well, quiet night. Plagued by uh, by sound issues too, and a sound guy who um, maybe wasn't the best at his craft. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so one of those. Well, that's we, fine. We've all been there. <laughs> we we've all been there plenty of times. But yeah, I mean, uh, if you guys don't know, which you know, you might you might not. Uh, we have played countless shows together with Vicious Attack and Air Raid. And uh, a lot of them in one of uh, one of Chicago's main spots for shows, uh, the Livewire Lounge. Mm -hmm. You know, we just played like, honestly, you know, when I first started, I felt like you were on every single bill. For a while you there, we, yeah, we kept meeting up with each other. Yeah. And, you know, I haven't been in the band as long as the other guys, you know. But, like, up here, you can't see it when I'm pointing at it. There's a bunch of show posters, and we were able to point at least one date out. You know, with air raid on it from like 
10 years ago or something yeah that must have been 2007 2008 with our original singer original guitarist like that was a while ago i'm glad to have you Uh, you know you were one of you were definitely one of the first people when i when i was grading this i'm Mm -hmm. like you know what i you know when i started this and this is going to sound bad but I wanted to put people that I actually liked on this show, you know, <laughs> instead of pandering to everybody. So I'm like, all right, well, who do I like? And you guys were definitely oh. in the, the, the short list, you know. That's I'm fine. Like, I, I want to tell people about actual Chicago bands, <laughs> you know. So, you know, along with you and anything that Luke is a part of and, like... <laughs> You know, eventually I want to get Bloodletter, the guys on Bloodletter mm-hmm. on here. They're know? they're blowing up. They're like on every bill in Chicago yeah. right now. They're doing that Forever Death Fest thing coming up. They, yeah. They're busy. I am very surprised. I'm like, geez, I felt like they were always there, but now more than ever, it seems like the bands that were up front, you know, for sh- the Chicago scene, mm-hmm. have now taken the back seat, and like the bands that were right there behind it are now pushing yeah. it, you know, which is crazy, you know, because it's like... You know, I always thought Bloodletter was awesome, but now they're literally killing it, mm-hmm. you know? You know, when I had Luke on the last time, he was telling me all these things that he's going to be doing. I'm like, Jesus Christ, how are you doing all this, <laughs> you know? He's one of the most busiest men in metal. <laughs> I, I don't know how those dudes can juggle two, three, four, five bands. Like, yeah. I'm just in the one, and I feel like I don't have the time or patience or, or financial stability to, <laughs> to, to do it. and. I yeah. see these dudes who are like double, doubling up and tripling up on bands. I don't know how they how they yeah. keep up. I'm in two bands, and I find it almost impossible. Yeah. <laughs> let's go through your musical history. You know, like let's talk about any bands that you've been in. How did you get to the point where you are now? <laughs> I uh, I've pretty much just been in the one band the whole time. Um, our our drummer Matt and I we went to high school together, and uh, we started jamming when we were you know that 16, 17 year old range. And uh, and just kind of took it from there. Met with our bass player, um, and Air Raid was formed pretty shortly after that. We've been around in some in some way, shape, or form since like 2002, mm-hmm. 2003. Um, but pretty much just been holding it out with Air Raid the entire time. Okay, well, that's cool. And for for everybody else, uh, who who's uh, you, you threw out some names out there? Who's Matt in your band? Matthew Krychek is our our drummer extraordinaire. Um, uh, John Ricks is our, our bass player. Um, we have Joe Keelahan also playing guitar, and then there's myself. We are we are a four piece nowadays. All right, yeah, you know I uh, I think I've only ever seen you guys as a four piece. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Our um, and much like the uh, the poster up on the wall, we uh, we were a five piece for a, a brief amount of time with our drummer's younger brother uh, covering vocal duties. And a, a different guitarist, a gentleman named Rob, who is who is no longer in the band. Um, our singer Peter, our original singer Peter, uh, went off to college, didn't have time for the band, really wasn't into it that much. Uh, so he left. We were looking for a vocalist for like a year or two, it just wasn't working out. Um, mm-hmm. Our original guitarist Rob had some issues, so he left. We played as a three piece for like, I don't know, about a year and a half, two years, um, with John and myself uh, covering vocal duties. We just couldn't find a vocalist. It just wasn't working out. We auditioned some guys. and It just, sucks, man. Dude, it's so difficult. Yeah, we auditioned some dudes, and like, it just it didn't work out. And much like a lot of other bands, we were just like, fuck it. Someone's got to do it. Might as well right. be us. So I almost did that for us. A vicious attack of what felt like we were at that pinnacle. Like, oh, crap, we're playing all these shows, mm-hmm. and, you know, we're, we're, we're super busy, you know? And then uh, our former vocalist Cecilia uh, left to go to school and mm-hmm. you know study in Singapore, yeah. which is great for her. Absolutely, but that left that void that we tried to fill for two years. <laughs> you guys were searching for a while, and I know you guys had some some not so great luck. It yeah. wasn't uh, I'm forgetting his last name, but Tony. Uh, mm-hmm. He was for like what a show or like a month. He was with you guys. And Tony then... was in here, but what it was very bad timing. Mm-hmm. He uh, he got a job at the mm-hmm. same time that he you know joined up with us. So literally, I think it was like a show or two, mm-hmm. you know. But even before that, we we had several different people come through and just learn our learn some of the songs, and then you know just not show up anymore. Mm-hmm. Or, it, it, it's brutal out there. And then the one that we thought was going to stick is, you know, uh, he uh, was too, like, spacey, you know. He, he couldn't get his shit together, basically. We uh, we auditioned a vocalist. He was a nice guy. He had a good voice. 
showed up to our practice space with two six packs of like MGD tall boys. We were like, shit, man, fucking points already. You guys are bringing beer for us. This guy right. proceeded to drink every one of those beers in about an hour and a half. Just fucking bam, 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 Jesus them down. Christ. Yeah. So by the end of the uh, end of the audition, he wasn't in the best of ways. So <laughs> that was kind of like a red flag. Well, maybe this guy isn't right for us. Yeah. We can keep up, man. We can we can hang, but... Um, well, on the first day, you're yeah, stuck on two, yeah. two, what did you say, tall packs? Tall boys, yeah. yeah. Fucking... Jesus. Not the best first impression. <laughs> Wherever you are, dude, you know, I hope you're doing good. Maybe you got some help. But, uh... <laughs> oh, this didn't work out. So, all right, you know, you, you, you explained Air Raid to us, you know, a little bit. Um, what got you into this style? Like, what would you say Air Raid is, the style of music? We, we describe ourselves as being thrash death metal. Um, thrash right death metal. in that, that happy medium between the thrash and the death metal. Yeah, I, I think we, we pretty much describe ourselves yeah. the same way. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, you know, you guys uh, you guys definitely are in that mold, but I always like, they're, they're, you have like a lot of, like, I don't, I don't know really what, you know, there's so many different genres of metal. Oh, yeah, it's hard to keep up. So I always thought I'm like, yeah, definitely like a thrash death or maybe like an extreme kind of like feel, mm -hmm. you know. If you've, if you've never seen them, there's plenty of uh, YouTube clip, uh, clips on, you know, on there that you could check out. I was struggling to find a YouTube page for you guys. The best of my knowledge, we do not currently have one. We did have one for a while and it either was taken down or we went to delete something and it just fucking shit on itself. It <laughs> yeah. Um, so I don't think we currently have a uh, YouTube page, but we're out there on all the other yeah. platforms, your Facebooks and your Bandcamps and your Spotify's. And um, I'm trying to think if there's any like good live videos floating around the internet. I know there are. There um, are some, like when the CMA was a thing, they took a pretty good yeah, video yeah. for you guys. Yeah, uh, exit for that like heavy holidays or whatever the hell it was. Yeah. So. Yeah, although there's not a YouTube video or YouTube page per se, you can still check them out. Just type in Air Raid Chicago Band, and then you'll you'll get a bunch of their videos. So, all right, so you Chicago, you know, death thrash band. Uh, what what got you into this style of music? I think, much like everybody else, very stereotypically, I was a grumpy, angsty kid, yeah. and I uh, I heard grumpy angsty music with distorted guitars and raspy vocals and up-tempo drums and i was like oh that's fucking awesome and, oh sweet yeah and you know i think it's pretty uh pretty stereotypical that you know you you start listening to the, your i mean i'm a child of the 90s and early 2000s so like mm -hmm. when i was going into high school it was 2000 so that's you know your corns and your your limp biscuits oh, are very yeah. prominent your system of a down slipknot uh, all of which i listened to and then your your taste kind of expand and that was sort of a gateway into the Black Sabbath and Metallica mm -hmm. and, and the Megadeth and Slayer. And then I realized, well, man, like, Metallica and Megadeth have some pretty cool guitar riffs. And, like, there's not a whole lot going on on Korn, so I'm going right, to fucking yeah. push that aside. I'm going to throw that back. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, you're, 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 you're doing that. What, what made you play guitar? Like, is that something you, you just picked up? And it just kind of like, I don't know, something went off in my head one day. Like, I don't mm -hmm. come from a musical family. I don't got parents or friends. I was going to say, or, some people have, like, a dad or no, something. None of that at all, man. I, I have a distinct memory of driving past. I think it was, like, a music go-round when I was probably, like, 12 or 13 and, like, seeing guitars in the window and just mm -hmm. kind of thinking, like, oh, shit, man, I should, like, I should play guitar. Yeah, like, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that looks pretty, that looks pretty sweet. I think I wanted to play drums, but I knew, like, that wasn't going to fly at the house. So, mm -hmm. like, guitar was, that was the next best thing. an easier option. Yeah. And looking back on it, I don't think I'm coordinated enough to play yeah. drums. Like, it's just, this is easy. Yeah. I can do this. So, all right, you just picked it up, and I assumed, like you said, you were learning, like, Metallica. And yeah, just, you know, your, your Nirvana riffs yeah. and your, your Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath. And This is the early 90s, whatever, 2000, so the Internet is a factor but also at this time, I think YouTube is like a baby, you know, mm -hmm. just first come out. So maybe people are just barely putting covers up there. So yeah. it's either you're looking at really like, you know, broken tabs mm -hmm. or you're just looking at videos and trying to pick up on what people are doing. Yeah. You know? I mean, we uh, we didn't have like a computer or the Internet uh, at the house when I was growing up. So like I would I took lessons for a little while, um, but it was mostly just picking apart Metallica riffs and Megadeth riffs. Mm -hmm. and. I think a lot of my uh, my my formative years learning to play was me just like sitting, you know, pressing pause and play and pause and play on the stereo, trying to pick out riffs and not really doing a great job of it, but being able to kind of kind of get 
closer in the ballpark of where the riff is supposed to be. Definitely playing them wrong most of the time, but you know, you do developing the the necessary the techniques. Chops. Yeah, exactly. You know? Okay, so you're playing you're playing guitar. Eventually, you start air raid, and you've got already kind of the idea of the music that you want to play. Mm -hmm. uh, what uh, I know this really you know this is a weird question to ask a guitar player because. It's like this is mostly is like usually reserved for a vocalist. But what is like your your writing process when you come up with songs? Are you like you're just sitting there and you're like, oh, that sounds cool, you know? Or I I found at least for me like if I sit down and say I'm gonna write this and I'm gonna write this this specific time signature. I'm gonna use this fucking scale. It never goes anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> but when I'm just dicking around and like, oh that. That sounds pretty sounds cool, pretty man. Sweet. What can I what can I build on that? Yeah. yeah. If I sit down with a purpose to write something, nothing cool comes out. Yeah. But I'm just noodling around, then that's when I find cool riffs. Yeah, dude, that's that's been me so many times. And I'm like, all right, writing a song today. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, or I have to nothing finish a song, and I never do. Yeah, that's your writing process. Now, I know with a lot of, like, you know, you look at, like, your shirts and stuff like that, mm -hmm. you know, they're like when I went back to like you know kind of like the extreme kind of genre you know, a lot of your graph design is like people shitting and stuff <laughs> like that, you know. So I'm like, where, where, where does that come from? It's just like you guys are just trying to be like uh, funny, you know, so like it's just comedy based I, kind of. Or I guess like our style is it's definitely gory and like brutal, but with mm -hmm. that that clever sense of humor Comedic to it relief. Yeah. we don't want to be like straight up goofy and silly but yeah. we don't want to be straight up like tough guy like we're gonna kill you because that's pretty yeah, fucking lame too exactly so a little sense of humor doesn't hurt no it's awesome dude i i love that you know when when you have a band that takes themselves way too seriously that's no, 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 no. you're like oh God, i don't want to hang out with we're you. out there pretending to be rock stars man there ain't nothing serious about that you can you can take what you do seriously but you know have a sense of humor about it yeah, there's a way to keep that balance. It's yeah. like, hey, you know what? You know, I'm just, you know, that that feeling immediately coming off your stage at the stage, and you're like, oh, okay, I was, you know, I'm the same guy that I was there. You know, there's no illusion that we're rock stars. You know, we're playing local bars for 15 <laughs> people on a yeah. Wednesday night, and you know, it's we're not rock stars, man. Exactly. We're, just, we're just playing some music, making some art, and hanging out. I still get an, uh, like a little embarrassed when someone will come up to me and tell me how awesome we were, and be like, "Oh, we, we, we messed up a lot." Dude, I can't <laughs> handle compliments. I fucking, I hate it. I'm really, 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 really picky about like our live performances and our sets, and I pick every little thing apart. So when someone tells me, "Hey, good yeah. set, man," and I'm like, "Well, no, we like bombed the shit out of that last yeah. song, and like, <laughs> we were way late on that intro," and I, I can't handle the compliments, man. I don't know how to take them. Yeah, yeah. That's one of those things that's you never really get used to, it. and if you do get used to it, you're probably a douchebag. <laughs> you know, but uh, that, that, you know, I always, you know, I always saw like whether it be the stickers or like the t-shirts or even uh, I don't know if it's your last EP it was mm -hmm. something awful. Mm -hmm. um, even with the the album cover, is like you guys are you know poking fun a little bit. It's just like uh, well, that's the joke about the name of that album. Something awful is like, well, what do we name the album? Well, it has to be something awful. It has right. to be you know something really grotesque and really violent, or else it doesn't fit in. But it's just we couldn't come up with a name, so well, it's got to be something awful. Yeah, dude, I, I love that man. Mm -hmm. It's like you guys, you know, definitely have a sense of humor. Oh, you have to. And so, all right, when was, uh, when was Something Awful recorded? That was recorded in uh, spring of, I want to say, 2016, 2015? 20, okay. 26, let's call it 2016. Okay, so uh, do you guys have any plans to go back into the studio? We are overdue for a new release. Uh, we are currently working on songs. We have about five or six ready to go, and then hopefully uh, in the near future, sooner rather than later, we'll get back in the studio. So you guys think it full length or like an EP? <sighs> kind of hard to tell. Yeah. I don't know, man. In, in this day and age, doing like a 12-song full-length album is pretty fucking stupid. Um, yeah. Less is more. Yeah. So in that that five to like eight range, yeah. five to eight tracks is, is perfect. Our last album had, I think, eight tracks on it, and that's, that's more than enough. Yeah, it definitely is. Like, you know, you hear about it a lot now because of, you know, where like streaming is now. Mm -hmm. People rip through that shit so quickly, and yep. your good is forgotten, mm -hmm. basically. So it's like, how do you keep people entertained, you know? And last year, uh, my other band, Central Disorder, uh, recorded an album, and we're like, all right, the that is done. 
but how do we make sure that this isn't forgotten in a fucking week, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, all right, well, you know, maybe we, we, we keep releasing videos or we keep, like, going on all these uh, podcasts and whatnot. It's, it's brutal out there yeah, sometimes. It is. The scene is incredibly oversaturated. Luckily, at least around here, it's saturated with a lot of talent and there's a lot of really cool bands, but there are so many fucking bands. Yeah. It's, it's daunting. It's yeah. hard to keep track of who's playing when and who's releasing what and when. Yeah. And so many, so many bands and so many bad bands that, like, you know, I was talking about Dark Entropy. That was my first band. We were playing primarily in the Burbs, and man, does the <laughs> Burbs have just a surplus of the worst bands ever. Yeah, there's some stinkers out there, and luckily the stinkers disappear after a while. The, the talent sticks around, at yeah. least in our experience, um, the talent sticks around. The, uh, the shit bands that don't know how to play their instruments and don't know how to write songs and just kind of show up and act like assholes. Right. They disappear after a while. Yeah, or go through so many different, you know, like, uh, you know, bumps in the roads mm -hmm. and all that. But, you know, I joined Vicious Attack and just like that, like, I went from hating playing music <laughs> <laughs> to loving it, you know, because now we get to share the stage with gentlemen as yourself. You know, oh. Very talented people you know so with with eventually you guys are thinking about doing an ep you know um do you guys ever do like any kind of like collaborations or anything like that would you ever entertain that i mean we'd love to do a split with someone if we could find the right band to do it with mm -hmm. um we've been on a couple like compilations you know like one track into a compilation with a bunch of other bands um we definitely would do that again but mm -hmm. yeah nothing's out of the uh Nothing's out of the question. I, I was looking at your tattoos. I see a misfit tattoo. Yes. I see a cannibal corpse tattoo right there. Yes. So what are what are some of your favorite bands? I see. Um, I think I got about? some. I got Guar right here. Slayers over here. Oh, um, nice. I got Motorhead up here. There's some Iron Maiden going on over here. Okay. Um, those were all done at a pretty young age. I'm not sure if I would get that many like band tattoos uh, on me nowadays. Yeah. Um, when you're young and impressionable and you're real fucking excited, you're like, dude, I love the Misfits. Misfits yeah. are fucking great. I'm, I'm 33 years old right now. If, if I can go back and do it, like, I wouldn't get a Misfits tattoo on me today. It's just, there ain't See, no fucking reason for it. My attitude is, uh, is the grim outlook of we're all going to be in the ground one day, so I don't really care what's on my body, you know? I mean, <laughs> I, I look at it like if I move into a house, I'm going to hang up like paintings and like buy some art and paint the wall and shit. Okay. And, like, you know, your body's your temple. And if I owned a fucking temple, I'd decorate it. So why the yeah. fuck wouldn't you get a bunch of tattoos? Right, right, right. Yeah, I, I got some, but they're all just nerdy. I got Cami from Street Fighter, Courage. I got Mario. <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts, yeah. You know what? People laughed at me when I got this. Why would you? Know what? I mean, coffee is very important. As we have yes, learned today, coffee exactly. is very important. But you know what? Already from one store, uh, they said, you know what? You're getting free coffee forever from one spot. Dude. Yeah. So it's this one spot that I go to all the time. And, you know, I'm not that guy. Like, oh, look at this. You know? <laughs> no, it came up very organically, surprisingly. Yeah. And I'm like, they're like, oh, we, we saw somebody who looks exactly like you. And I'm like, well, this might differentiate me, di differentiate me from the other false Michael. And I show them that. And they're like, you have a Dunkin' Donuts tattoo. Free coffee, man. Free coffee. Nice, so, nice. You were talking about getting an invader, right? An Ingle invader? I, I picked it up, man. I got you picked it up? It. I did. I did. I uh, have it. How do you like it? Have you, have you plugged it in yet? I plugged it in. I haven't put a lot of hours on it. I bought it used for a ridiculously good price, and I think the reason it was such a good price is because it's just in shit condition. Oh, really? I, I opened it up. There is like a millimeter of, of dust and cat hair and cobwebs on the inside of this amplifier. Um, so you have to open it up and yeah. get a vacuum in there. The, the bright side is, considering how poorly this, this amplifier has been treated over the years, it sounds really fucking good. Yeah, so I'd have to assume with, with a tube swap and a little bit of, a little bit of TLC, it's going to sound yeah. that much better. Yeah, dude, for no, real. I'm looking forward to opening it up. I really, I always wanted um, an angle, specifically the Invader. I like yeah. that German, like, uh, saturated, really compressed, tight, punchy sound, mm -hmm. and just never really had an opportunity yeah, to grab one. I've seen people, you know, even people who get away with using, like, the Fireball, the Fireball is, mm -hmm. is great for the price, you know, because, you know, anybody who's not really in, you know, like, the gear scene, I guess you want to call it, um, 
Eng- Engel is one of the more expensive brands, mm-hmm. but it's totally worth it. You know, you're you're, you're getting that engineering. Nice you know, things cost money. Exactly. I, I've heard though that like if you go overseas into Germany, it's not as expensive over there. It's more of a local thing. They don't consider it as 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 boutique as we do here in the United States. Over there, it's kind of just like <coughs> mid mid grade yeah. equipment. Yeah, over there they don't they don't put on all of that uh, all of those taxes. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, but like with the uh, angle, we've got the fireball, and then next level is definitely like your savage mm-hmm. and your powerball, mm-hmm. and then after that, you get into your like your signature series like R- Ricky, what is Richie Blackmore? Blackmore, yeah. One, you know the artist and edition and the yeah. Top tier is definitely the Invader. You know, I think it's got four channels on it. It has a shit ton of bells and whistles that I yeah. will never, use. I will never yeah. fucking use. <laughs> um, but they're there in case I want them one day. They are fucking yeah. there, which is kind of my thought process on a lot of. Oh games. yeah, dude. I might, I might not use it, but if I do, I have it. Yeah, I, uh, I. This is my powerball right here. I need to swap out the tubes. Mm-hmm. But how many, tu- how many, how many tubes did you say? So it's four preamp tubes and four power tubes. Oh, so that's not that bad. No, not at all. It, I thought it was going to be a lot worse. <laughs> I, I mean, the, uh, the it's the 100 watt version. The 150 watt versions, I believe, they have uh, two extra uh, power tubes. I think they're still in that four preamp. I didn't even tubes. know there was two versions of it. They, there was, there's three versions. They have the 100 watt, the 150 watt, and then they came out with the, uh, oh, the Invader great. Series Two yeah. a couple years ago. Oh Jesus. <laughs> Which, to the best of my knowledge, is the exact same thing with just a revoiced um, uh, Channel 4 and probably better cleans on Channel 1 and some other bells and whistles that, you know, Oh, wow, you use. really did your homework. I figured you would. After. I, I like gear, man. I like yeah. reading up on it. And even if yeah, it's shit I don't own, I want to know about it. It's, uh, it's, it's definitely awesome being a gear gear nerd, but also extremely expensive. It is. It is. It's, it's tempting to just, you know, get shit when you can, but you have to... Prioritize. Yeah, yeah. It's like, well, do I put gas in my car? Or do I do I really need this other guitar? And yeah. So, what kind of guitars do you have? I know you've got. You used to have that Jackson, right? Uh, I've got a couple Jacksons lying around. Um, okay. I have a uh, Warrior. I, I, yeah, yeah. You know, the War the Warrior was my first like nice guitar. Um, that's kind of like a stay at home guitar nowadays. Cause mm-hmm. it's, it's nice, but there's certain things about it that like it's really it's got bad neck dive. It's just not a well balanced guitar, at least for my body type. You got dude from Revocation who, you know, plays a, a variety Fancy of them. One. Yeah. yeah, and he makes it work. Um, for me, though, it's a stay-at-home guitar now. Um, I've got the custom Ran, the V, oh, which is a beautiful sp- guitar. Sp- Feels perfect. Um, I've been eyeing one of those for so long. They're, they're really nice guitars, man. It was a bitch getting it here from Poland, but yeah. uh, but it, it's, it was worth it. Totally worth it. Yeah, I love that thing. Okay. Um, got a, a Jackson uh, Pro Series V that's kind of like my backup right now. Um, good guitar. Um, I modified it pretty heavily. Uh, so you like that Jackson feel then? I do. I do. I think if, I feel like a lot of the newer Jacksons, just the build quality isn't there. Mm-hmm. Um, there are certain things in that Pro Series V that like I don't like, but then it's, I'm using it as a backup guitar. It's not my. It's not my main. It, it does its job well. Okay. And does does the V's and the Jacksons? Uh, do, do they do any neck diving? No, the uh, V's are really well balanced. Um, okay, that's cool. I don't know, having that like the two fins over here and the headstock up there, they're I don't when, find. When, when you said the warrior, I'm like, well, of course, you know, the, the warriors, the, the the neck dive. But I also knew the Kellys. You know, that's the explorer shape, right? Yeah. Every Kelly I've ever had or, or played has the similar neck dive, and I'm like, all right, well. I know the soloist one because that's definitely like a more well balanced. I didn't know about the V's, so mm-hmm. that's pretty sweet. I've only ever had one Jackson, and it was uh, like the Randy Rhodes style V, the offset. Yeah, v the Rhodes V with like a reverse headstock, and it was pretty sweet. I, uh, I I have a couple of guitars that like I bought with the intention of modifying them and and putting them in the rotation. And I will one day. It just no. it never happens, man. I got this a decent Pro Series uh, BC Rich Ironbird. Um, real nice guitar, single pickup, single volume knob, original Floyd on it. I'm going to swap the pickups out, um, do a little work on the bridge. You see that BC Rich is coming out with a whole new line? I'm excited about that. Dude, I can't believe it. I'm like, they finally got their shit together. Holy I, crap. I've had a love-hate relationship with yeah. BC Rich. Sometimes I, I really like them, and I pick one up, and I'm like, this thing plays like shit. Yeah. My, yeah. Uh, our old guitarist had Mockingbird. Beautiful-looking guitar, but it just it felt like shit. I never, yeah. I don't know, I, just, I didn't like playing it. 
but the uh, the Iron Bird I picked up, it feels real nice, nice neck, um, good body weight, really comfortable to play on. I'm yeah. looking forward to putting that one in the rotation. Yeah, this new series they like, they did all the research. They're like, this is what is popular right now. Mm -hmm. Like they got listening popular. to your customers. Yeah, oh my god. Yeah. They got like poplar bursts and they still like you could still tell it's a BC Rich because they'll still do the what, what is that binding that's like kind they, of they use the uh rainbow. it's not mother of pearl Ab Ab uh, abaddon abalone. Abalone. abalone there it is yeah they're still using that i think more than like most other brands there's you know when when you think of that binding you always think BC Rich or like sometimes ESP mm -hmm. you know but mostly BC Rich, so I'm like, all right, well, they still kept a little, yeah. a little bit of what they are for that. But they look gorgeous, and mm -hmm. they're bringing back uh, what is the uh, the stealth? They're bringing back the stealth. No, the Chuck Schuldiner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're bringing back the uh, Iron Bird, mm -hmm. which you know it's very pointy, and I would never buy one. But it's cool that they're doing that. You know, I um I never really had any interest in like the warlocks or the beasts or the bitches, but the yeah. Iron Bird always kind of stuck out to me. Big. Morbid Angel and 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 Triaz and Thoth and Eric Rutan from Hate Eternal. Mm -hmm. I always uh, I like them a lot, and they always were rocking the Iron Birds. So I told myself if I ever you know found one for a decent price, I might have to might have to look into that. Oh yeah, dude, they are really gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm interested, you know. But no, it'd be cool we'll to see, see what they come out with. Yeah. Uh, do you have any favorite show moments? Favorite show moments, man. Um. Or you could start with the with the least favorite. <laughs> There's plenty of those too. Um, coolest thing for me, we opened for um, uh, Eight Eternal and Goat Horror at Reggie's, and I mean that's Ooh. just cool. Fucking yeah. being able to like warm up an audience for fucking Eric Rutan, you know, Dude, awesome. big influence. You walk in to do fucking unload your gear and there's like one of your favorite guitar players yeah. like doing a sound check on stage just like hey what's up man welcome to Dude, Chicago I love, I love that but uh being able to go in that like balcony area above the stage at Reggie's and kind of just like look down and watch Rutan like do his thing and what he does really cool man big learning big learning moment because you know he has a really specific technique and like it was that was a cool one that, that's kind of burned in the brain all right Okay, man. But well, you got uh, you got any least favorites? <laughs> oh man, um, I mean, shitty performances and like technical misfires always kind of make for a bad show. We've, yeah. we've all had those. Um, I had a, a cabinet with a corroded input jack on it, and it just crapped out in like the it's middle up. of a song. Yeah, yeah. Um, that wasn't fun. You got to find that like sweet spot where you jiggle the cable and make it work and. It's um, the worst feeling is being like, oh, well, I'm just screwed. Yeah, you know, I, yeah. got, I got no other options. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, worst for me, though, uh, was at Reggie's. I think it was our first time playing there. Uh, local support for Grave. So that's fucking cool. Uh, nice. Grave. Um, Grave. Our, like, second or third song into the set, I threw my back out, fucking moving around. Oh. Dude, it sucked so bad. I, uh, I had just, I used to have long hair and, uh, you know, male pattern baldness was kicking in and I was getting older so I shaved the fucking thing. Yeah. It was my first show without hair and I think I was trying to like overcompensate for the yeah. headbanging. Like what because you know, when you have hair you headbang and right. hair goes everywhere and now I'm a bald guy and I don't know how to fucking move <laughs> and I just I moved the wrong way and just popped something in the middle of my back and it just sucked. Oh, man. Jesus man. Yeah, it wasn't that fun. That sucks. There's definitely footage of that one floating around YouTube somewhere. Really? You can see I'm like <laughs> I'm all frozen up and I'm trying to like headbang and you can just see I'm not enjoying myself yeah. at all. You're in agonizing pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh geez, yeah, just that's like, a bad uh, moment. Yeah, that wasn't fun. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of those things it's like you can never escape and no matter how much you prepare you're gonna have technical failures. Yeah. You're gonna have some dude in the you know, behind the board who doesn't care about your band. Mm -hmm. That's why I, I try very hard to just, you know, make sure everybody's cool with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. I go to the sound guy, I talk to him a little bit. Be respectful of the sound guy. That is their fucking exactly. house. Absolutely. Once they've exactly. proven that they're a dipshit, then whatever, but Mm -hmm. We've gotten lucky that most of the sound people we've worked with are really fucking pleasant and knowledgeable. Every once in a while you get a dipshit who's kind of just there and uh, not doing a good job. We had one guy, uh, he didn't have enough microphones, so we were looking for him, and he was hiding under a table watching like YouTube videos, like way in the back of the bar. This is at, uh, at Smiler Coogan's. And he's underneath the table watching YouTube videos, finally track him down, like, hey buddy, we need an extra microphone on stage. And, like 20 minutes later, he walks up with a kick drum mic that he kind of just puts in the mic stand and wraps a little duct tape on that fucking thing. And Jesus Christ, yeah. man. So, sound guy. Sound guy. Sound guy. Yeah. 
Yeah, and then we were talking about Cobra's house. Uh, Cobra and Reggie's probably have the best the crew. Exact opposite. Yeah, yeah, they're so fucking good. Which is crazy. They're uh, on even, top of it. Even Livewire, um, Spencer yeah. Morris always does a bang up fucking job, making yeah. us sound better than we are. All right, so you guys are possibly thinking about writing a new EP. I mean, it's definitely going to happen gonna sooner happen. rather than later. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you got anything else going on right now that you want to plug? Um, we got a Halloween show coming up uh, uh, October 26th at, uh, at the Fallout, the, the world-famous Fallout. Nice. Um, that'll be fun. It's a stacked fucking bill um, uh, with Inner Decay, Edvorza, uh, Sable Bedlam, and uh, Skeletal Prison. Dude, that, um, that's such amazing. a cool bill. That's such a cool amazing bill. bill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely have to... I think I, I looked at my calendar that day, and I think I have it open, so I'm going to come check you guys awesome. out. Awesome, awesome. It's, it's been too long. And it's a Halloween show, too, so that's always fun. There's There will be assholes dressed in costume, and everyone's having a good oh, time. And, be, yeah, yeah, everybody's going to be throwing back some cheap beer. It's oh, absolutely. Be awesome. yeah. No, it should be fun. All right, so you got the October show. Anything else concrete right now? We just put something together for early January, but the details are pretty... Are pretty Shaky. Uh, yeah, yeah, at this moment. We were trying to put something together this month with uh, the Doom Room, in uh, Lafayette, Indiana, it just didn't work out. But it's early in the month; you never know what happens. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's hard to play shows though, because like we are working on the writing process, and like we want to focus on writing the new songs. Mm-hmm. But then you book a show, and you, you got to kind of put that on the back burner, and then get the set list ready. And right now, getting the new songs ready is kind of the uh, is kind of the focus. The priority. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of what's happening right now is uh, with with Vicious Attack. We're, we're not booking anything right now because of what we're doing, you know, with writing. But uh, we definitely, you know, want to shake off the rust a little bit. So yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens, you know. But, all right, cool. Um, I think that's pretty much it, buddy. Do you got anything to say to the YouTube audience? Go fuck yourselves. Go fuck yourselves. Everybody, Paul, Air Raid, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, dude. Very much appreciated. Thanks right. for the coffee. That's a wrap. Awesome. That's a wrap, people. Oh. <laughs> All right, yeah, it's, now, now comes the grueling editing process. It doesn't sound like fun at all. <laughs> no, it's, it's very much not. But it's fine, because I signed up for this. Yeah, it's something to do, man. You obviously enjoy yourself. Man. Oh, yeah, dude, I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't. Yeah. yeah.